everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you instructions on how to retrofit high beam assist, also known as FLA, which is, I guess, the German abbreviation for this, um, on an E60 BMW. Uh, but the same or similar instructions apply to E90, E70, the X5s, and a bunch of other cars from that same era of BMWs. This is an E63, actually, to be exact. Um, so what parts do you need? You need a new mirror. The new mirror must have a camera for the high beam assist. When you're ordering a new mirror or, or buying a used one, make sure that it also has the same uh, features as your old one, which includes the uh, battery, uh, sorry, the, uh, the alarm light, garage door opener, if you have that, um, electrochromatic auto dimming, which is, you know, you can check that you have that with this uh, dot here. And I don't know, there's, there might be other extras, so make sure you got the, uh, the right mirror. Uh, and you need the covers for it, which are different uh, because of this hole here for the camera. The other thing you need is a little wiring harness, which uh, I made myself in my case. Um, you, you, there's, it doesn't actually exist as, as a, a piece like this, but each of the parts do exist from BMW. I'm going to put in the um, part numbers in the comments below, so check the comments. Um, I made this by my, you know, by myself by ordering uh, parts from BMW for a few dollars, and uh, that's it. And then you need some coding at the end when this whole procedure is done. You need to have the car coded so that it recognizes the new uh, high beam assist mirror. Uh, but that's again not a big deal if you know if you if you know how to do coding. And if you don't, again check in the comments. So. First thing in the procedure of the physical removal is to uh, remove this cover. It's, com it's composed of two pieces. You can see here in the new one, whoops. So the cover opens up like this. Uh, it's got these little tabs that hold it from at the top, in the middle, and at the bottom. And you can just pry them out with uh, like a screwdriver, or multiple screwdrivers, or uh, a thin knife or a trim removal tool or something like that. Just make sure you don't damage the plastic. I kind of have already damaged the plastic on this. Um, in my case here, it's already cracked open so because I uh, didn't have, you know, it, it takes too much trouble to remove it. So I'm not going to do that on camera, uh, but, you know, use your own methods. Um, tilt the mirror in whatever position gives you more room to work with and just remove these sideways this obviously in your, in your case that will be a bit harder because you have to crack them open first and then the actual mirror removal is super easy uh, first you unplug this wire here there's only one uh, plug that's it press the tab and pull and then you twist the entire base grab the base from here the base of the mirror and then you twist it counterclockwise you only need like 45 or 60 or so degrees and then it comes off. That's it. You can see how it's got this hexagonal shape here. So you only need to just kind of turn it. I guess it's 60 degrees. And then it comes off. Um, next thing we need to do is tap into the rain sensor. I should have said in the beginning that this only works if your car has a um, rain and light sensor. From which we're going to get the CAN bus signal. These wires here are for the CAN bus signal that normally in the factory wiring just go directly to the um, uh, rain and light sensor. Um, with my method, we're not cutting any wires, we're not changing anything in a irreversible way. We're just using this wire and we're using our homemade splitter to actually get the sig signal from there. So what we're doing is we're plugging in the existing rain light sensor wire here into, uh, sorry, existing uh, wire into the uh, new harness. Um, plugging this thing into the old position so that the rain light sensor still gets the same signals. And we've got some additional wires coming out here for the mirror itself, because the new mirror, unlike the old one, you can see here, the old mirror just has the one plug. Where is it? And it's just here. Whereas the new mirror has two plugs. The additional white plug is for the CAN bus signal for the new camera. So, um, well, I guess we can attach the wires before. Uh, probably, probably better to 
uh, to attach the mirror physically and then plug in the wires. So again, get the wires kind of out of the way. Position the mirror at a 60 degree angle. Make sure that this here, this piece here, the base is flat against the mirror, uh, the window and twist. It shouldn't take too much pressure or effort. If it's taking a lot of effort, that means you, you haven't positioned it correctly. So just do this. Well, I mean, it does take a little bit of a push, but there you go. And then it slap, snaps into place. So now just move the mirror out of the way in whatever position is easiest for you. Stash this uh, bigger piece. I don't know if there's some room. There is some room behind the mirror. I guess we can do something like this. Just to get it out of the way. Push it in the back like this. And then just plug the two plugs here in the front. You can plug the harness into the white connector and then the other one that was already there for the old mirror. There we go. If you want, you can tape the some of the wires that are coming up here so you don't get any, uh, you know, uh, any noises or uh, squeaks or anything like that. In my case, I haven't done that and, you know, I had this attached for a while, I haven't had any issues. You can also tie it with, uh, I don't know, zip ties or whatever you, you want to do to prevent it from wiggling around. And finally, install the cover. The two covers like this. Uh, the only thing to watch out for is not to get any, any cables caught in between the two parts and also to make sure that the main harness here goes through uh, the, the hole that's intended for it. Um, cover. Again, move the mirror out of the way in whatever position gives you more room to work with. Wiggle things around. Okay, so one thing to note is that there is a piece here that goes around the round uh, holder. And what I had done just now is I put some of the wires in its way. So that's why I couldn't close it. So make sure that wire is kind of stuck further down uh, so that there is room for that trim piece to, for the cover to actually go through. So it's kind of, uh, you know, there's no rules about this. Just figure out where where you can get it so that it's not in the way. And back to positioning the cover. Over here. Okay, much better now. I'm just making sure that we've got the main harness going through the right place. And when it's all lined up, just click it into place. There we go. Okay. And now it's done. Um, how do you use the high beam assist after it's been coded? Uh, you can also code a thing where it uh, gives you an option in the iDrive to turn it off or on. But when it's on, basically what it, the, the way it works is uh, you put the high beams on by clicking your stock forward. And the first time you click it, it goes into auto mode. So basically it will automatically detect uh, lights and uh, other reasons for, for which to turn off the high beams. And when it's clear, it'll, uh, it'll keep the high beams on. Uh, and when you click it one more time, you're then forcing it to turn on the, the high beams. Uh, you're not in auto mode. And when you click it towards you again, it uh, just turns off the system. So that's how it works. That's how it works. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, um, write some comments below or see my instructions in the, in the details. Uh, just check under the video. That's it. I hope this helps.